Raise your hand if you believe in aliens. I'm not talking about the aliens that look like this, or the aliens that look like this, or the aliens that fly around in flying saucers that you see on the internet, you know, all those crazy YouTube videos. Maybe, maybe there's aliens like that around, but I don't think they've come to Earth. I mean, who would go to Earth? Seriously! If those aliens know how to fly across the galaxy, or fly across the universe for that matter, they're not coming to Earth, okay? They're smart enough to know that we don't have our shit together enough to be meeting aliens. I mean, we're still doing the whole genocide thing here on Earth. You know, we might want to stop that before we expect any aliens to come here and be like, Hey, what's up, dude? You want to hang out? Huh? When I say I believe in aliens, I mean I believe in extraterrestrial life. I believe in life on other planets. Not only do I think that somewhere out there there's life, I think there's tons of it all over the universe. Why? Because the universe is really, 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 really big. Really big. There could be a planet out there that's just got little tiny microorganisms on it. There could be planets with people similar to us running around doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And as I said, guys, the universe is really, really, really big. There's so much shit in it. We've only seen a little bit of it. We're like, hey, look at that thing that's millions of years away that we'll never actually get to. Isn't that cool? Probably nothing there, right? So to demonstrate my point today, guys, I am going to show you a little something called Scale of the Universe. This is actually Scale of the Universe 2. I originally played, I guess you can call it playing, it's just an interactive type of thing. I interacted with this type of thing a very long time ago, and I came here to do a video, and it turns out there's a second one. So hey, here's the second one. It's got all this interactive stuff. Look at this, you click on this human. Human! I'm gonna assume you are a human. I'm a human too. Did you know that there are over 7 billion of us? That's a lot. In fact, if you met each person for one second, it would take you about 200 years to meet them all. Better get started now. No. Because most of them suck. So, the way this scale works, guys, is you can go up or down. So you start at the size of a human. This circle is a meter, and you can go into that circle. Boom. These are all things that are less than a meter. What's Russell's teapot? What are you? Oh, some guy named Bertrand Russell was like, Hey, there's a teapot orbiting the sun between Earth and Mars. And everyone was like, No, there's not. He was like, Yeah, prove it. Prove there's not a teapot there. <laughs> oh, God. So if we keep getting smaller, obviously we're gonna get smaller animals. There's a matchstick, common earthworm. I don't know why it's wiggling, it's kind of weird. Don't you just love wriggly, slimy earthworms? No. I know this doesn't have anything to do with how big the universe is, guys, but I just wanted to kind of show you how small things are as well. I mean, this is an ant. It's like, ant, you're, you're huge, ant. Look at this dust mite. That thing is, that thing is a lot smaller than you, but wait. Look at this human egg. That's smaller than a dust mite. Get wrecked dust mite. And it just keeps on going and going and going, man. Mist droplet chloroplast. That's a red blood cell right there. And it just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Look, that's a bacteriophage. It's a virus. Those things are tiny and smaller and smaller and smaller. Transistor gates. Those things are really tiny. It's like, how tiny? Well, zoom back out. There it goes. Up and up and up and up and up. And holy shit. There we are. That's a human right there. Crazy, right? But it gets smaller and smaller and s look, I mean, look, look at the thing down there. Look at this burr. It goes all the way down there. What are we going to find? Who knows? Let's keep going. We got DNA, phospholipid bilayers, phospholipids, glucose molecule, carbon atom. And now at this point, I don't know. How do they know this? Uh, do you know this stuff is actually there? Because man, like that's really tiny. A picometer? Really? Well, let's go even tinier. That's a uranium nucleus. That's... That's a thing. And then we really start going off the deep end here. <laughs> like what? Up quark? Down quark? Strange quark? Charm quark? Bottom quark? Bottom quark? Yeah, no wonder it's brown. Yachtometers. We just keep on going down. Point zero 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 one zero one zero 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 zero. What? What the? Why is this here? Because at the very end of everything is this. And this, I'm pretty sure, is just a theory. But here it is, we got quantum foam, plank length string. Not the string, like this is not a piece of string. A piece of string is a lot bigger than 0.00000001 yachtometers. But it's quantum string. It's some sort of thing that makes up the whole universe, maybe. Who knows? It's too small to see. All right, anyway, that was fun. Let's go back out to the size of a human. Yeah, it seems really far away, doesn't it? All those things are really big to a yachtometer. 
Small things are great and all, you know, I mean, it's cool to see how small things can get, but the big things are what really blow my mind. I mean, look at this. So we got a sunflower, boo, whatever. <laughs> T-Rex, elephant, what? Are you kidding me? So a T-Rex and, and an elephant are the same size? And a giraffe is the same size as a T-Rex? I thought those things were bigger. Okay, well, look, I gotta trust you, scale of the universe. I gotta assume you know what you're talking about. Man, look at this. Look at this Fregolimus. That thing is big. Oak tree. Blue whale. What's that? Oh, that's a tree. Okay. And then we got airplanes. And then we got the Statue of Liberty, the Titanic, the Great Pyramids. And, uh, well, now we're getting really big. Central Park. What, what, what is that? What is a Kruthni? Kruthni is known as Earth's second moon. It actually is an Earth's moon. Just follows a, an elliptical orbit around the sun that is near Earth's orbit. And its year is 364 days. Wow, that's pretty cool. Right? Mountains are big. The Large Hadron Collider is pretty big. Halley's Comet's pretty big. A neutron star. Neutron stars are pretty small. You know? Because, I mean, geez. Look at, all, look at all these things. These are moons, right? That's a moon. That's a moon. That's also a moon. So, the, a neutron star is smaller than a moon. Cool. So, once we finally get out past all this stuff, you start seeing the big moons. What the hell is that thing? Is that Io? Io has a lot of volcanoes. The most in the solar system. Io's geysers emit frozen sulfur dioxide up to 500 kilometers into space. Hey, that sounds cool, doesn't it? And finally, we've made it out to our old pal Earth. The Earth is our only home. While living on it, we may consider it huge, but it is still important to take care of it. When it is gone, there will be nowhere else left to go. Are you kidding me? Elon Musk says he's taking me to Mars. All right, screw Earth. We got the Minecraft world here, which I think is pretty funny. That thing is freaking huge. Uranus, I mean, nobody needs to tell you that Uranus is gigantic because I'm pretty sure you already know, okay? <laughs> and here is where things start to get crazy at the gigameter size. So guys, let's have a chat now. This is, what the hell are you doing spinning around over here, dude? <laughs> Vega is found in the Lyra constellation. It's also part of the Summer Triangle, composed of Vega, Altair, and Danub. Vega spins so quickly it bulges. However, we can, we see it pull on, so it looks circular. Oh, good to know. You ever wonder how they know that it spins so fast that it bulges if we can't even see it? Those scientists, they're good at filling in the blanks, aren't they? And that's all that space is, just a bunch of blank, blank space. Love you, Taylor. 20,000 times more solar energy hits the Earth than the human race uses. That just goes to show you how much freaking energy is in the sun, huh? And that's, the uh, sun is just a tiny star. Look at the sun. Sun, you are a baby loser. Because, I mean, look look at this guy over here. Wow, that's, that's our Taurus. Who names these things? Aldebaran, uh-huh. And it just keeps getting bigger, man. Can you even see the sun anymore? No, you can't. It's down there somewhere. There it is. And zoom it out. Okay, so, as you can see, stars get pretty big now, don't they? It's still going, man. God, how, what, what the hell is going around these things? Must be pretty hot there, right? Look at this, this is the Cooper Belt. The Cooper Belt is a region of the solar system outside the orbit of Neptune where small bodies orbit. Many dwarf planets exist here. It's like a larger asteroid belt. Look at that thing, that's two testicles hitting together, right? <laughs> The Homunculus Nebula. At the center of the Homunculus Nebula lies a star. The star, which is Eta Carinae, had a magnitude of minus 0 0.8. What? What is that? Is that even a thing? In 1841, second brightest star in the sky. Now it is very dim six magnitude star. What? Okay, this is a fun one to put things into perspective here. This is a distance that the Voyager has traveled from Earth. It took 34 years to do it. The Voyager 1 has traveled to a distance of 17 billion kilometers. And that's nothing. So that is the furthest anything has ever gone. This is a light day right here. This is how far light travels in a day. And apparently that's how far this thing has gone. One light day. So you hear things that are light years away. Usually you hear them as being millions of light years away. So take this, multiply it by 365, and then multiply it by a million. You have a million light years. That's fucking long. And then things start to get uncomfortably large. We have a scale down here, as you can see. This is 10 to the 14.6 meters right now. So this is the Stingray Nebula. It's a, a, a planetary nebula, it's relatively young, and it's constantly growing. Whoever named this nebula must have thought it looked like a stingray. Do you? I think it looks like a nebula. 
So a nebula is just a big old cloud of dust, guys. <laughs> a really big cloud of dust. This is a light year. Okay, so finally we're at a light year. Doesn't this make you feel like you're a little bit small? We're still on nebulas, man. Boo. Who cares about nebulas? I've seen enough of those things, man. And they just keep getting bigger. Like some of these nebulas are hundreds, thousands of times bigger than the other nebulas and they keep on going. The Great Nebula in Carina, Rosette. Barnard's Loop. What the hell is Barnard's Loop? That's a nebula. This thing is only 1,600 light years away. Seems like nothing, doesn't it? It covers 10 degrees of the sky. 10 degrees. Ooh, okay. That's actually, yeah. Uh-huh, that's big. So now we start getting the globular clusters, which aren't galaxies. They just orbit galaxies. They're little clusters of stars and they're really close together and all that good stuff. Lots of stars in there, dude. Lots of them. And we just keep on going. Oh, hey, would you look at that? Our first galaxy! The Leo 2 Dwarf Galaxy is a satellite of the Milky Way Galaxy, so it's just hanging out over there somewhere. So it's obviously a tiny galaxy because it's called Dwarf Galaxy. They're all called Dwarf Galaxy for a while. This one's just a Magellanic Cloud. And now we are 10 to the 21 meters, a Zeta meter. This is the Milky Way. Okay, this is where this is where we live. This is this is our galaxy. All right. Cool, right? 120,000 light years of stars and it's spinning in a big thing and it's all there. So even things inside the Milky Way are too far away to get to in the foreseeable future. We don't know how to do this whole, you know, light speed travel. And even if we did, it might take us thousands of years to get anywhere at light speed. And Einstein says you can't go any faster than light speed. So I mean, what are we gonna do about that? The point is, this is just one galaxy, okay? You wanna know how many stars are in a galaxy? Let me tell you. No, I don't have these numbers on the top of my head, okay? There are 100,000 million stars in the Milky Way. 100 billion stars. And the Milky Way isn't even the biggest galaxy out there. But listen, it's not about the size of the galaxy, it's how you use it, okay? So 100 billion, you could say that that's a pretty large number, right? Let's keep going. So our little Milky Way is right over here, guys. Check this out. This one's pretty big, eh? This is a 500,000 light year galaxy. We're only 120. Lame, right? So the Milky Way is pretty much gone now. It's way down there. Look at this one. Abel 2029, 6 million light years across. This thing is 1 billion light years away. Pretty far. So we have this thing called a local group and it's 10 million light years across. That's where we are. If our galaxy was a house, then the local group would be a little village. There's only 30 galaxies in there. And we are the second biggest, huh? Andromeda galaxy is in there too. You know what's crazy about that? It is two million light years away from us. Gonna have to swipe left to him, even if he is in your local group, not doing long distance, right? So if we keep zooming out, guys, we will find something called a cluster. And this is where we are. We live in the Virgo super cluster and we're in the four next cluster so we're in a cluster and we're in a local group and the local group's got a bunch of galaxies in it and then the cluster is inside a super cluster really big but it keeps on going obviously you knew i was gonna say this right like what this is a super cluster so this is how big the super cluster is 110 million light years across but it keeps on going doesn't it now we start getting out to this so we have uh what, what is that super void that's a big empty place. We live in the Pisces Cetus Supercluster Complex, and the only thing bigger than it is the Sloan Great Wall, which is this thing, 1.3 billion light years. The Sloan Great Wall is represented by the thick green band. It is the largest object in the universe. It is made up of galaxies and it is called a galactic filament. We are not in it. In fact, it lies about 1 billion light years from us. Just a small drive in your spaceship, but it keeps on going obviously the last thing in this scale of the universe guys is the distance to the hubble deep field if you ever heard of the hubble deep field they took a spot in the night sky they were like hey that's really dark let's put our telescope on it and leave it there and then they left it there for a really really long time and they were like oh hey it's full of galaxies who would have thought even the even the darkest place in the night sky is filled with galaxies so we've made it to the very end this is the observable universe and the rest of it 
is the universe. So this is this is more universe out here. This is 10 to the 27 meters. So now guys, for my point, don't you think it's a little bit silly to think with all this universe, with all these super clusters, and then down to the clusters and the local groups and the galaxies, and you keep on going and eventually you get to the nebulas, and then you keep on going and eventually you get to the little tiny stars, and then you keep on going to the little tiny, tiny stars, and then the little tiny, tiny stars has some planets on it, and and that's where we are and we think we're all alone and I think that's kind of silly remember when I said there was a hundred billion stars in our galaxy how many galaxies are there well would you look at that there are 100 billion galaxies guys and our galaxy alone has 100 billion stars in it. Anyone want to do that math? I'm going to do that math. Let's do that math. 100 billion times 100 billion. So this number is so big that it's only expressed as an exponent. Obviously, this is just me taking the Milky Way and then multiplying it by the amount of galaxies. How many stars are in the universe? Let's find out for sure, huh? So one scientist estimates there are 10 trillion galaxies in the universe. He did the same thing I did, and he came up with one and 24 zeros. So whether it's one and 24 zeros or one and 22 zeros, I think that is a freaking gigantic number. That's a lot of stars, dude. So as I said in the beginning of this video, guys, I believe there's life out there on other planets because to me, it doesn't make sense for there to be this many stars in our universe and for our star to be the only one that's got a little ball of life going around it. Does that make sense to you? There's got to be other things out there. They probably just can't see us because they're so far away. They can't visit us because they're so far away. They probably don't know if there's anyone else out there either. There could be thousands of civilizations and each one is just like, ah, I don't know if there's anything else out there. We can't go. So the reality of it is, guys, we don't know if it'll ever be possible to travel these huge distances in space, you know, with the warp drives and the, the wormholes and all that good stuff. And if we can't, that basically means that every possible life form that exists in the universe will probably never know about each other. They'll never know about us. And we'll all just die alone together. Do you believe this life on other planets? Why or why not? Leave your answer down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and try not to get too bummed out about the insignificance of your existence.